You know, if I were king, I were king. If I were crowned king, maybe the the king of Abraka. Huh? My son, hmm? he will always see me as king, but he will see me also as what? Father. You that sees me outside and I'm walking in Abraka town and you're an indigenous of Abraka or I come into town with my kingly regalia, with all my entourage, you see me, you give me that kingly respect. My son can respect me as king, but he has right to walk into my bedchamber as son. You understand that? So even though in salvation you come under government, you also come into a love relationship. The Bible says we have capacity now to call him Abba. Abba. So his father. And the reason that is possible is that you have now been made the right. You are no longer in rebellion. Right? So you believe that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse 3. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. My time is almost up. Run to that verse for me. And perseverance, hope, and character. Run to that verse. What's the verse we are looking for? That scene ran from, let me find it myself. I thought they were with us. Is it 14? Yes, it's 14. Go to 14, please. Or do 13, 12. I know it's 14. Therefore, aha, this is what I'm looking for. Therefore, just as true one man Sin did what? And death through sin. And thus death did what? Because. So one man sinned. Who is that? That's the first man, Adam. He sinned. And what happened? Death spread to all men. Because of his sin. So all men began to carry that nature of sin. Not just the nature of sin, the penalty of sin, which is death. So even a newborn baby born into the world is under that penalty of sin. And what is the penalty of sin? He says it spread to all men. So when one sinned, all became sinners. There's a debate in the body of Christ that who is a sinner? Is one a sinner because they sin? Or one is a sinner because of the nature of sin? And the whole idea is to, there are some programming managers that want to give you the impression that once you are born again, anything you do, you can't call it sin. One of my sisters was talking with me from, from abroad and was saying to me that um, she attends a Bible study and in that Bible study they, they were teaching that a Christian cannot sin. So I asked, so when a Christian lies, what do you call it? Huh? You call it stress? Oh, transgress? Oh, okay. What is a transgression? You see. So what do you call it? You know the whole idea? They don't want to say that the Christian is a sinner. If it is sin that wakes one a sinner, then if a Christian sins, then a Christian is a sinner. Are you seeing the logic? So they don't want to make, call, call, say that it is sin that makes one a sinner. But you see, those two things can be true at the same time. Sin and the practice of it makes one a sinner. And sin as a nature also makes one. You can put that, those two truths in different contexts. Are you with me? 
So the Christian eh, might not necessarily be a sinner because they are engaging in sin. They are engaging in sin, but that is, that is what the Bible describes as a carnal man. One who is not supposed to be under the government of his flesh, but still continues to allow his flesh to rule him. So he's not necessarily a, 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 a he, he, he might not be a sinner as a natural man is a sinner. But he's one that is engaging in sin. So the nature of sin can make you a sinner and the practice of sin can also make you. Are we together? Next verse, 13. 13. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no... Next verse. Nevertheless, death did what? Even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a what? Who is the one that was to come? Jesus. So death reigned. Death has been going from generation to generation, from man to man. Even though they did not sin after the similitude of Adam's sin. And what was Adam's sin? Rebellion, disobedience. God is not pursuing Adam, punishing Adam because Adam ate a fruit. He's punishing Adam because he disobeyed his instruction. He decided to rebel against his government. Are we together? So, justification is, you get justification by faith. And what is faith? You believe that, oh my, my time is up. You believe that you have been delivered from the penalty of sin, which is death. You have been delivered from the guilt and the, sh and the shame of sin. And you have been, imp righteousness has been what? Imputed. You've been declared righteous. Talking about righteousness, even though you do not do anything to be declared righteous, but for you to be righteous, there must be the practice of righteousness. So your positional righteousness in Christ must partner with your practice of righteousness on a daily basis. It's he that does the righteousness that is righteous. That's what John says. It's he that does the righteousness that is righteous. So in the past, you have been justified. In the present, you have been sanctified and you are being sanctified. So salvation in the present, you were saved, justified. You are being saved, you are being sanctified. And you were sanctified and you are being sanctified. You were sanctified in the sense that, what, because what is sanctification? Sanctification is to separate unto God. That's what it means to be sanctified. To separate someone unto God. That's sanctification. That is, that person is no longer common. That person is now sacred unto God. That's to sanctify. Are we together? For those that are writing. To sanctify is to what? To separate unto God. And that separation is both instant and continuous. So you are sanctified instantly in the sense that you are brought out of the world. You are separated. Come out from amongst them and be you what? Instant. You are in the world but you are not off. You are separated instantly. But that thing is also a process. Like I was trying to explain on Sunday. The Holy Spirit will now be working a work on your inside transforming you making your thoughts to align with his thoughts making your desires to align with his desires that one which will lead you unto perfection 
will continue till the day that you ascend into glory. Are we together? So you are consistently being separated unto God. So you will hear Peter say things like grow in grace. You need to grow in grace. You grow. That growth process is the process of sanctification. Where the life of God is now totally overwhelming your vessel. Totally taking charge of your vessel. Making you more like Christ on a daily basis. That is the sanctification process. Are we together? And that work is the work of the Holy Spirit. And the last thing that you will see in the future, your salvation is now glorification. Glorification. So here, in justification, you are delivered from the penalty of sin. In sanctification, you are delivered from the power of sin. In glorification, you will now be delivered from the presence of sin. So sin that rules in this realm, sin that has initiated corruption in this world, in glorification, when we ascend into the God and we go into the new Jerusalem and we are going to spend eternity with God forever, sin will no longer be present in that realm. So you hear the Bible say that in the new Jerusalem, no corruption will be permitted to enter inside. No corruption. So nothing like temptation in that realm. That is why the man and his wife, they were naked and not ashamed. Nothing. This is why God has to walk a walk on you. Because if he were to put you the way you are now in that realm, you will bring your corruption there. Are we together? So that's why sanctification must be ongoing to make you like Christ. He killed everybody. I know they don't like us saying that God can kill. Oh God. Hmm. Tell your neighbor God can kill. Do it with for now so that they know you are serious. God can kill. He can kill you. Kill you. Kill your black face. God can kill. After he had wiped out all of humanity and Noah was the only one on the earth, what was the first thing that Noah did? He went and drank and got drunk. And the very corruption that God had wiped out by wiping out all of humanity came back again. The cycle began afresh. Because sin is still present. And what sin is seeking is seeking dominion, is seeking control. Are you people following? What's your name? Godly? Ungozi? Have you been following me? How old are you? 13. 19? Ah. Okay. Is your mom here? Who brought you? You came by yourself. Celebrate her. Celebrate. You come to the tent normally. Wow. God bless you. All right? So what, what, what Noah did immediately he found freedom again was to bring corruption to the earth. And before we knew, because he was drunk, Ham now went and did what he was not supposed to do. And before you knew, a curse had broken out. Everything that God was trying to deal with, all the immorality and everything, found a place again. So man is, is a matter. That thing that causes man to sin, that facility in man that makes him want to look in the direction of sin must be totally dealt with. And then... There will be glorification. So what is reconciliation? Let me just deal with these two. Then we we'll take questions. What is reconciliation? Reconciliation has to do with relationship. The relationship between man and God is restored. The relationship between man and God is restored. 
since what was causing a rift between man and God has been dealt with, then man and God can now be reconciled. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 18. Now all things are of God who has done what? He has reconciled us to himself. Through who? And what has he done? He has also given us what? So what you are doing in evangelism and telling people about Jesus. I wish I could tell us how to actually win a soul. Hmm. Kai. I wish, but maybe it's not for me today because my time is up. We must take questions. Must. Must. Now, he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Next verse. That is that God was in Christ doing what? God was where? In Christ. Reconciling what? The world to himself. Not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us what? The word of reconciliation. What does it mean not imputing their trespasses to them? That is, instead of putting the sin and the trespasses and the iniquity upon man, he put it on Christ. So Christ in his death died our death. And in his resurrection, we received his life. Are we together? So we are now reconciled to God. What does that mean on the inverse? Invariably, it means that the one who is not born again is God's what? Enemy. And will be a candidate of God's wrath. So when in evangelism, what you are doing is that you are, you are taking men from being enemies to being what? Reconciled. 